Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, I'm going to teach you how to work example 3.4-1 out of Sandler's fifth edition textbook using Aspen Plus. So let's switch over to the textbook. The problem statement is fairly simple. Steam at 400 bar and 500 degrees C undergoes a Joule-Thomson expansion to one bar. And we want to determine the temperature of the steam after the expansion. They do this several ways using uh, data out of the textbook. We're going to do this now using Aspen Plus. So I have started Aspen because that can take a while. And we're going to just start a new simulation. And if you have not used Aspen Plus before, uh, please contact me for some other tutorials if you're a Missouri S&T student on how you can access that. Uh, for those at other campuses, you have to have the Aspen Plus license for your campus. Uh, there are tutorials that Aspen Plus puts together that will get you started. If you need to do it on a specific platform, you need to contact the director at your facility. So here we've got a new simulation started. In this particular one, we're just running water. So my component, it starts out so that you specify your components. Say find, it found some water, conventional, everything looks good. So I've got my only component and next I look for the little red circles. The method is the next problem, and so I need to specify my method. Since this is water, I'd really like it to as closely as possible match the steam tables. To do that, the model I'm going to use is IAPWS 95. This is the International Association for the Properties of Water and Steam from 1995, this is their formulas. And this is the formulas used to generate the steam tables that we're most accustomed to using. So this is gonna be my best match. So now then I have everything is got a check mark or is just not needed at this point. And I'll switch to simulation. It brings up an empty flow sheet we are going to be putting in a valve. So here are my valves. You can choose which style you want your valve to look like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just the appearance. <laughs> so there's my valve. I'm going to put in a material stream feed and a material product. Each time I'm clicking back on this little arrow down here, if you're not an Aspen user, uh, that allows me to click in the flow sheet without it adding another stream or another valve, whatever I've been working on. Now we'll see that my streams and blocks over here need to be specified. I'm gonna start by specifying my feed so the input to that one, they said that the material came in at 500 degrees C and 400 bar. It had a flow rate of one kilomole per hour and it was 100%. Actually, they didn't give a flow rate. I put in just one kilomole per hour because it made it easier. Um, you have to put something in. And I prefer to put in either a mass or mole fraction as my specification on composition in case I decide to come in later and change my flow rate. It won't disturb the problem. Now, I know that I want the material to exit at one bar, but I do not want to specify it in my stream. I need the block to do the calculation and come up with that one bar. 
If I put it in here, I will have an overspecified problem and it will not run properly. So now then let's look at our block. In this case, I'm wanting to do an adiabatic flash for specified outlet pressure. Okay. My outlet pressure that I want was given in the problem statement as one bar. It's a vapor and liquid phases. And at this point, everything looks like it's got the little blue check marks. And more importantly, the run button has appeared. So I'm going to push the run. And eventually the little time there went away. If I look at results summary, push up the button for streams. I can see here that my exiting temperature is 215.7 degrees C. So this completes the little Aspen Plus example 3.4-1. Thank you.